Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Green Room Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni, and joining me once again is Colin Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Colin, how are you feeling today? A little rough. I mean, my face looks a little rough. I feel. I mean, we were supposed to do this podcast like in the morning, and here we are. I can't sleep well. You know, that's what you get with me. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) Colin has a lot of problems in his life. (laughs) (laughs) This is secretly an intervention. Yeah, podcast <laughs> podcast about North Texas basketball, and it's like, all right, listen, Colin. Actual actual intervention. This is how we got yeah. him here. Yeah, exactly. Talk, talk I, wouldn't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have come here otherwise. How's your bracket doing? Uh, I think I have a. I'm like 85 percent right, but like Kansas I State went, coming Kansas through State, for you. But I already lost my championship matchup with Kansas. Ah. So, so I think I'm out. But you got UConn still. Yeah, I, I mean, mean it, it's funny because the games I got right, I got right. Like Arkansas over um, Arkansas over Kansas. I got um, Creighton over Baylor right. Like the games I got right, I'm a sharp. But then Marquette lost. And uh, what was the other one? I had Purdue losing early. You know, all the, the basic ones. But regardless, we'll see. UConn, I UConn. think the one I'm happiest about most is Kansas State, obviously, over Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And then Michigan State over Marquette. I think I think those are my two. That was my, good. My, my proud moments. That was know? good. Yeah, Michigan yeah. State was very live to win. Their their guards are really tough. I mean, it's a really yeah. good Michigan State team. Um, so yeah, good 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 pick, good pick. But now we talk about the more important tournament, Colin. Mm. The NIT. The NIT. Uh, last time we did this podcast, I think we talked about yeah we were we did it after the Alcorn State pod. We did it on our uh, the Dave Campbell's Republican Football pod. We did a little recap of that. Yep. Um, again, uh, those pods will not be on our podcast feed. So if you missed out on that, you can check it out on, um, I think all the, it's on our YouTube and the links are in the description, but basically Republic of football, um, on all, you know, Spotify, Apple, all that stuff. That's where you'll find green room podcasts, um, once a week there. Now Colin North Texas played Sam Houston state, uh, on Sunday at 3 PM. You yep. were in attendance. I was once again. And uh, what a night! What a game! What a performance! What What were your thoughts? Seventy five to fifty five win. This listen, we we've we've hyped. I feel like we've hyped up Sam Houston State, right? We're like this team is a great defense. Their strength of they schedule won the is really good. They won the or, WAC. Okay. They technically had the second best record in the WAC, um, but had, were the one seed in the tournament. Don't ask me; it's a long explanation. But they were the one seed in the WAC tournament. Like, and the WAC is not a bad conference at right. all. Utah, I mean. All the Utah schools, like they have West Coast schools. I mean, Stephen F. Austin is no notor- is very good usually. So um, that's a really, really good team. They came in with the 15th ranked defense in the country. Uh, the offense was not as high, but still a very capable Sam Houston State team. Point is, yeah. North Texas has a 116th, and I bring this up because North Texas had a, has a 116th strength schedule according to basketball reference. Sam Houston's 122. We talked about Sam Houston possibly being like third or fourth if they played in Conference USA this year. Yeah. And if you were to tell me at any point in the year that North Texas would beat a Middle Tennessee, a UAB, any of those, you know, those top four teams by 20 points and basically doubled this was double the score of that team throughout most of the game, I'd think you're lying. And this is this is the North Texas team I wanted to see during the regular season. This is the, the North Texas team that I wanted to see during the Conference USA tournament. I think they finally clicked because let me tell you, ball movement looks great. Their assist numbers are up. They're running when they need to. It just the basketball actually is fun to watch these last few games. Two things. Well, first, um, I I I can see where you're coming from. Where like this was a performance that felt like an outlier. I think more so than than anything else. Like Colin, they shot how many threes did they make? Colin? Right, right. They made they a made lot of sixteen threes. Point, threes Colin. Point they being, made sixteen of twenty nine threes. Point bro. being, point like being, let's, point let's being. calm down a little bit Stop. from saying this Stop. is okay. Stop. Point Sorry. being, ever since they were out of it, right? That Western Kentucky game, they destroyed Western Kentucky. Yeah. Okay. Up until this point, we've seen better ball movement, more open shots, scoring isn't becoming ridiculously hard. UAB, obviously, I would say the UAB game where they got destroyed by UAB for the first, you know. 10 minutes of that game in the conference tournament yeah. i would say that is the outlier in these last five or so games that they played because they the offense right. although it's still slow yeah. looks competent guys are getting open shots you're actually seeing tyler for once maybe get a get off ball you know 
catch and shoot threes. It's it's a lot different than just pass screen pass to Kai screen pass to yeah. Tyler screen. You're actually getting some ball movement. I think that's that's the thing that I I like to look at the most. I think you're right. I, I think you are right. At the same time, we can wrong. acknowledge that it's an outlier shooting performance. Yes, yes. 16 of 29 from three. 16 of 29. Six, I'm going to say it again. 16 of 29 from three. Um, this is a Sam Houston State team, if you look at it. They are bottom 10 in the country in three-pointers allowed. Like like I said, they're a great defense. Top yeah. 20 defense in the country on Ken Palm. Like, bar none, very good defense. Uh, they do allow a lot of threes, though. And if North Texas did not go 16 of 29, even if let's just say they shot a normal percentage and they went 10 of 29, maybe this game's a little closer. Maybe it's an interesting game. There are games. North Texas outplayed them. North Texas is the better team. I'm not saying anything crazy here. But when you get it, Ruben Jones went 5 of 5 from yeah. 3, Colin. That was crazy. Well... <laughs> again i'm not taking anything away from them they yeah. made shots that's awesome um but yeah i'm not using that as an name like some big picture like that this is well i'm not talking thing. about the shooting shooting performance i know I'm, what you're I'm, talking about you're talking about the offense right. look it's the same thing i agree we, with it's the same thing we saw with alcorn state they didn't hit yeah. this is that's what they look like when they don't hit shots right you yeah. get the open shots but you're not hitting them and these last two games especially we talked about the nit you're not playing scrub teams you're not get, you're not playing gimmies we saw clemson lose the other day yeah. you're playing good teams and the the offense just looks a lot more fluid, a lot better. And just Let's to kind of segue into something. Go ahead, segue into it. because I already know what I was going to say. Go ahead. Abu did not play last night. Abu only played 12 minutes against Alcorn State. Correct. Do you think that has any correlation? Well, on the broadcast, they say it was family matters, family reasons that mm-hmm. he was on the team. Um, but like you said, he only played 12 minutes against Alcorn. So him not being there looked weird it looked weird yeah. but there's nothing there's nothing that we've seen throughout the season to indicate that he just quit the team oh of course right? not that, and that's so, not what i was trying to insinuate at all <laughs> okay 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 well i was looking at it from the perspective of why he wasn't there and they said family reasons so i'm giving him you know benefit of doubt yeah he's he, he's wherever he is i hope everything's okay um but i know you're looking at it from a basketball perspective you're right. saying he's not there is it is that the reason the offense looks better and I went back and pulled the clip. I don't know if you saw it. I sent in our group message. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went back and pulled the clip from after the Rice game, after the Rice loss, where we panicked, went all out, went crazy, uh, which I stand by everything I said in that podcast. But regardless, I said, I want to see Aaron and Mar- Jada Martinez front court lineup uh, minutes. Mm-hmm. And Jada Martinez, he only had six points, two of six from three. I'm not saying he was a great player, but – he can score the ball, man. Like he is a viable scoring option here. Aaron Scott, we know what he can do. Um, and then you have Mule Sissoku, who has been the player that we didn't know was going to be good after that Rice game. After that Rice game, it looked like it was only Martinez or or uh, Abu at center. Yeah. Nobody else. Well, Sissoko has carved out a very very nice role for himself on this team. Uh, they didn't need him in this game. He played 14 minutes. Jaden Martinez played 24. Um, I, I, I agree with you. I do think that is part of the reason why they have gotten better looks, but I do think also they have been playing with more freedom. Mm-hmm. So I can't just say that's because of a boo, because if they were intent on, you know, pounding the rock and doing all the things that they've done throughout the season, I, it doesn't matter who's on the court, right? They would have be playing that way. So I think it's twofold. I think it's twofold. Yeah, I agree. Is that fair? Is yeah. that fair? Um, but hey, shout out Tyler Perry, six of nine from three. Uh, Listen, those continued. first three, those first three were were not open, and he just went crazy. It was that yeah, was crazy. It was great. Um, I I don't have anything else on on this performance uh, specifically. I think defensively they were also really really good. Well, we expected that right against Alcorn and Sam Houston State. We said, hey, defensively they should be fine because they're not playing against. Vanderbilt, Michigan, Toledo, go down the list of good teams in this tournament. They're playing against Sam Houston State and Alcorn, and they did a good job against Alcorn. They did a good job against Sam Houston. Sam Houston, you know, 22 points in the last 10 minutes to to bring it up from 33 to 55. Um, 
I, I just, I, it feels good seeing this team shoot the ball well, play with confidence, and play free because it, it's the NIT. It's not the CBI. This is right. a tournament that matters, and if they win the whole tournament, it's a big deal. So uh, we can look ahead now. I'm about to sneeze. So yeah, you, you look like you're about to sneeze, dude. I was trying to, <laughs> I was trying to finish my sentence. I was like, Whew. but it, it, it went. It's gone. Now. Yeah. Moving on, you got Oklahoma State. Yes. They are not a Sam Houston State. They are not an Alcorn State. They are Oklahoma State. Kate Cunningham played on this team a couple years ago. They get big recruits. They have a couple of national championships, although they're really, really old. Point is, this is a basketball program. Uh, strength of schedule, we talked about that with Alcorn or with Sam Houston State. They have eighth. They're eighth in the country in strength of schedule, according to basketball reference. This is yeah, a different yeah. team, completely different team. However, Youngstown State gave him a game. They did. Youngstown State gave him a game. Uh, Eastern Washington, not so much. They lost by 11. Uh, Eastern Washington didn't. What are your opening thoughts going into this game? Uh, for context, uh, more context, I should say. Uh, Oklahoma State beat Sam Houston State by 14 at home early in the season. Um, beat UTA by 11. Went 8-10 and 10 in the Big 12. They were right on the bubble for a lot of that. That's why they're one seed in this tournament. Um I don't know what I expect. I, I think we we previewed it, previewed it well earlier uh, on our initial podcast when we said we expect them to beat Alcorn, we expect them to beat Sam Houston, mm -hmm. and we expect them to give Oklahoma State a game. This is what I was talking about in the preseason or uh, in the pre-tournament podcast when I said, "What do we have to hold on to this season?" Right. This needs to be a game where it is tied with five minutes left or they're in the game with five minutes left, or they're winning with five minutes left. Yeah. This needs to be one of those games where we're like, okay, this we're locked in. This is right there. You're playing an Oklahoma State team. You're not far from. Uh, how far is Stillwater from? I think I've looked it up for like Four three hours. hours. Four hours? Three and a half hours from Denton, yeah. Okay, three and a half hours. Are you driving there? Is that what you know? I was going to, and then I, I can't I can't swing it. I, tr I tried. Okay, that's okay, <laughs> as long as you tried. But again, it's, it's an Oklahoma State team that if you win – we now have something to hold on to this season. And not mm -hmm. again, we can look back on this season and be like, they're 28 and seven for God's sakes. Like there's nothing wrong with this season, but at the same time, it's still the season where, you know, you lost in the semifinals of the conference mm -hmm. tournament and sure you beat Alcorn and Sam Houston, but now you get uh, Oklahoma state. And if you get blown out by Oklahoma state, it, the season is what it is. Look, the cake is baked. All right. The rest is icing. How much icing do you yeah. want on the cake? I'm an icing guy personally, mm. and I want some icing on this cake. Now, there's a little bit right now, a little bit, but I want enough to where it is covering the entire cake. Mm. I don't want to see an inch of cake. I want to see the whole icing covering the covering it all. Uh, and that's what this Oklahoma State win would be. And that's even what an Oklahoma State close, fun loss would be. Is that fair? I would disagree with you on a loss, actually. Okay, so you think no matter what, if they don't win the game, it's a, it's not good. I wouldn't say it's not good. It's just disappointing. It's like you're waiting for the climax of the season to come, and it doesn't. Because on the other side of the bracket, UAB is also blowing out teams. UAB is playing well. You have to, and you have to compare yourself in that context because, Wait. because UAB beats you in the conference tournament. If they do better in the NIT, you also have to keep that in the context. Now, yeah, years from now, you might not remember that, but you'll always remember this as the team that didn't do anything special. And I think the only way you can do that is with a win. It's not if you're in a close game, it's with a win. And yes, this isn't going to be like a Purdue win if you beat Oklahoma State, but it's going to continue that legacy of, okay, you got Purdue a couple years ago. You went to the IT last year. Now you have a Tyler Perry, you have a Kai Huntsbury, you have Aaron Scott, you have Ruben Jones, so on and so forth. What can you do against a team that you, everyone wanted you to play in the preseason? We all wanted them to play a team like Oklahoma State in the preseason. This is now their chance. Once everything is done, all said and done, all your eggs are in the basket and how you play. You played the whole year. Yeah. You have to, in my eyes, you have to win the game if you want to hold something onto the season. Because if they lose, it's like, okay, well, I guess next season. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I won't. They're 28 and seven. Right. Like, I don't but, want the tone of our podcast to be. Oh, I'm not trying to make it negative. The point is, but, is, is that if we look at their, if we look at North Texas's. Okay. Here, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to cut you off, but I, no, I it, it hit me. Okay. It hit me. Okay. Entering this season, I think we had three 
goals, let's call them. Mm-hmm. Win the regular season conference tournament. Or I'm sorry, win the regular season conference. All right. Um uh win the conference tournament. All right. So one of those two, preferably, or get in that large bid to the NCAA tournament. Mm-hmm. I think those were the three, right? Uh, win the NIT, I think, could be on there too. If you if, if you told me before the season this team was going to win the NIT, that's would, big. That's huge. Yeah, it's huge. So sure, let's throw in those four. The first three did not happen. They didn't win the regular season title, despite having opportunities to beat FAU. You know, you lose against Rice, you lose against Charlotte. They didn't win the tournament, obviously, lose against UAB, biggest game of the season. And they didn't get an at large bid because of those two things, but also because, you know, you lose to Rice and Charlotte. So those three things did not happen. They did. They have won the most games in North Texas history. There's no taking that away from them. Right. But when we set goals for this program now under Grant McCaslin, the standard is very, very high. And he, not, not he, I'm sorry, not he. This team has not hit any of those three goals. Mm-hmm. Doesn't make it a bad season. Just they didn't hit those goals. The fourth goal is still attainable. And I don't even think they have to win the NIT. If you beat Oklahoma State on the road on ESPN, I forgive it. Everything. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Because if you look at the last six seasons, including this one, 20 wins, 21 wins, 20 wins. You have the 18 wins, but you beat Purdue. 25 wins, you go to the NIT. No one remembers the 25 wins. You just remember the NIT, in my eyes, right? This year, you have the 28 wins. Yeah, you have the record. But if they lose to Oklahoma State, what are you going to remember 20 years from now? You're not gonna. You're gonna see like, okay, yeah, they had. It's all wins. grouped together, yeah. right? Exactly. Like, you, it's the success of Grant McCasland. You need to have those those triumphant moments because you had it against Purdue. Get me another one, because the wins the wins can only count for so much after so long, right? Especially when you're playing. Not saying Conference USA is bad, but you're playing the same competition. You're, you're used to it. Show me what you can do in a tournament. Give me if oh if you get this one against Oklahoma State, this would be this would rival. The Purdue season, I think. No. No? No. No. They won the tournament that year. They won the conference tournament. Winning the conference tournament. That's true. Is almost the pinnacle. <laughs> like, that is so huge. Uh, and that, that moment was huge. But it, I it would be the second biggest moment. Or, okay. Purdue moment one. Uh, conference tournament win two. I think this would be the third biggest moment of the McCaslin era. Yeah, I agree with that. I completely that feel- forgot about the conference tournament. Yeah, I, yeah. that. Yeah, I agree. Okay, that's all right. It happens. Uh, <laughs> didn't sleep. You know, didn't sleep. Yeah, intervention. Uh, but yeah, I still, if they if they play close to me, and we can look at it after the, after the fact if they do lose and how the game goes and everything. If they lose on a buzzer beating shot, uh, I think we'll remember that. I think we will be like, damn, they gave they gave them all they could handle. Oklahoma State, mm-hmm. blah blah blah. Um, it will be interesting. It'll be interesting. I, I want them to win this game, though, because it, at some point, they fell short against FAU twice, lost to UAB in the tournament. They had the nice double overtime win against UAB, which, I, again, is the high point of the season right now. But I think this team is playing better than it has at any point in the season. Hopefully, they can get a boot back, because I do think they will need him against Oklahoma State. Uh, for those who haven't watched Oklahoma State, to me, they are pretty damn intimidating. Um they have Musa Cisse, who's seven foot one, who is an absolute monster. I have not watched their NIT games, so you know maybe they're missing a player or two. I don't know, but if Caleb Asbury from Texas State, who was a monster, Musa Cisse, seven foot one, uh, Avery Anderson. I don't know if he's healthy. I know he he has missed some time this year. No, okay, he's not. He has not played. So without him, but still very very capable team, very good team. Um, we'll see. We'll see what they can do. Yeah. But, all right. That's enough of that. That game is on Tuesday night. Uh, what time was it? Tomorrow night, 6 p.m. Yeah. Well, I like saying the day because if you say tomorrow and they listen to it tomorrow, they'll think it's Wednesday, Colin. It's a good point. The trick of the trade there. You learn. Thank you. You learn. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm always teaching. Uh, Mar- Tuesday, March 21st at 6 p.m. on ESPN. Let's talk about some other news, Colin. Jaylee Mitchell yeah. um, will no longer be the head women's basketball coach at North Texas. Uh, she took over in 2015. Uh, she took over a five-win team that year. Uh, so she was there a year before I got there. But when you got there, that's crazy. Yeah, same year. Isn't that weird? Yeah, that's weird. Um, 
She's gone through these seasons, ups and downs, you know, disappointments. Uh, I covered them for two years, up close and personal. Uh, really fun person to be around, really fun coach to be around. But at the end of the day, I think the writing was on the wall here. I think the change in administration also put some pressure on them. Yeah. Uh, change from Wren to Jared Mosley. Jared Mosley obviously was not uh, doesn't have the ties, you know, that I think Wren Baker did. Um, and at the end of the day, Jared Mosley is here to, you know, try to build winners across the board here. He hired Eric, Eric Morris as his coach. Now going to have to hire a women's basketball coach. We'll see if there's any other job. I think I assume all the other jobs are set. Softball, women's soccer, volleyball, they're set now, I believe. Um, so, yeah, this will be an interesting hire to make because she was there for eight years. And you don't hire or you don't fire the best player in North Texas history for nothing. Yeah, so that's what makes this interesting. You're going to have to get some you're going to have to get some a good coach here. Yeah, especially when you kind of have always had mediocre seasons since that 5-1 season in 2015. I mean, you go with Jaylee went five win. And this is only conference, not including tournaments. Five wins, eight wins, six wins, seven wins, six wins. You had two 10-win seasons, then eight wins. And yeah. that's just not going to cut it if you want to come, especially when you're on the other side of the coin is Grant McCaslin winning 20 games a season. Yeah. So, And she did not she did not win 20 games at any point in her career. Interesting. Um, and the tournaments, I just, the tournament struggles for me were always the indicator. Like it just felt like they could never overcome. Right. To a degree. And she had some talented teams. I mean, she had Quincy Noble this year. Uh, if you go down the list of her teams, I, there's some talent on there. Jay-Z on Jackson's over there uh, at UTEP, so on and so forth. So um, nothing crazy to, you know, talk about here, but it's it's just it's noteworthy we'll see yeah, who they hire because if they can get a women's basketball program going with the way the basketball program is 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 clicking i think there's room for excitement on that side yeah for sure so. all right that's it that's all we got for y'all today hope y'all enjoyed it a nice little 22 minute podcast next podcast will be on wednesday i believe for uh dave campbell's maybe thursday wednesday or thursday uh, on the Dave Campbell's Republic of Football podcast feed. So check that out over there. If you're watching on YouTube, it will be here once again. Uh, we appreciate you all for joining us. Um, Colin's going to go get some rest. So leave us a I'm like. I'm working right now. So well, it's never stopped you before, Colin. Uh, leave us a like, comment, share, and subscribe. And we will talk to y'all later.